This is the 13th lecture for the animal chiropractic class for the portion on ethics and legal considerations. Now we're still talking about record keeping. Uh, some more of the common sense rules for record keeping. Additions and changes should be made appropriately. If you make a mistake, you should use a pen to draw a single line through the mistaken information. Then go to the next available entry, put down today's date, the date that you are making the correction, and write down what the correction is, what the correct information is. That makes it very clear what you entered on the date of the patient visit uh, so that the mistake can be seen. And it also makes it clear that you made a correction. Now, I think some doctors are afraid to make changes to their record or corrections to their records, and I think that's a mistake. Uh, people expect doctors to be human. They don't expect perfection. I think doctors expect it from themselves far more than the public expects it. And I also think that if a record is produced that has absolutely no corrections and no mistakes in it, it causes some uh, jurors to doubt when that record was created. And, and that's not what you want. You want it to be clear the record was created at the right time. Uh, and if a mistake was made by accident, it was made and corrected appropriately. Hopefully it will also show that the correction was made before a lawsuit or a demand letter was sent. Uh, properly identify the record before you write down anything on a piece of paper. Be sure you've identified the client and the patient. Otherwise, you will find loose pieces of paper around your office uh, and not know where to file them or, or what, who they concern. If you use forms like an examination form, be sure you fill in all the blanks. And if you're not using the entire form, be sure you explain in your narrative why you aren't using that portion of the form. Uh, keep in mind that the client uh, may see your file someday, so it is very diplomatic to not say anything disparaging about the client. And because clients generally love the patients that they bring to you, you may not want to say anything disparaging about the patient either. Uh, telling somebody that their beloved dog was acting like a wild Indian in the kennel uh, is not necessarily, probably not a good thing to do. Uh, stay away from using judgmental words. Uh, be as matter of fact as you can be in describing what happened. Be as factual as you can be. Uh, be careful about words like routine. Uh, when you say routine, that it may mean one thing to a doctor. But to a jury looking at it, it can be interpreted as meaning that the doctor really wasn't being very careful because they viewed it as routine. Uh, saying something like, unfortunately, or inexplicably, uh, isn't necessary. Just state the fact. Here's what happened. Don't say, we don't know why it happened. Just say, here's what happened. Um, identify the record keeper. The person who is making the entry in the notes should be identified. Just a quick word to the wise. Most people use their initials. Uh, somewhere in your office, you should keep a list of all your record keepers and their initials. Uh, inevitably, if you're ever involved in a malpractice case, there will be that one entry by the employee who worked for you for about three or four weeks before they found something better, uh, and you will have a difficult time recalling that person's name in a deposition or at another key time. So make sure you understand or keep a list of the record keepers in their initials. That also helps protect you from duplications. So if you have several record keepers with the same initials, you can get them to change it up or add a, a, a middle initial so that you don't have confusion about who entered that record. Uh, don't enter data prematurely. You know, sometimes when you have some extra time and you know a patient is going to be coming to your office soon, you may start entering the information uh, for that visit. 
and that is a mistake. The problem is if the patient, for whatever reason, doesn't come or the visit is rescheduled or canceled, you've now got an entry with today's date showing some information that may or may not be accurate when you finally do get to see that animal. So it, it, it don't enter the, the information as you're, you're examining and treating the animal and not before. Uh, keeping the records legibly. You have to be able to read everything that is in your records. One of the tactics lawyers will use in a deposition is they will find the most incomprehensible line and ask the witness to read it. And when they can't read it, it becomes obvious that there are entries in the uh, medical record that the doctor couldn't have used for treatment of the patient. That record should be kept consistently. You know, from visit to visit, the same type of record should be kept for a patient. Doesn't mean it should be identical, but it should be consistent and similar in, in the format and the way it's kept. If there are any mistakes or contradictions, be sure to explain those contradictions. Um, you know, maybe there's confusion or, or you mistakenly say an animal is a male when you know it's a female. Um, if that kind of mistake or contradiction occurs, explain it in the next note that you put into the file. If anything unusual happens, uh, the animal reacts in a way you don't expect, uh, or something unusual happens uh, to the people working around the animal. You should take the time to document that because it's those unusual events that can become problems in the future. Uh, be careful or, or try to avoid using ambiguous words. Again, try to be as matter of fact uh, and unambiguous as you can be. Instead of saying the patient seemed better today, explain what it is that made you conclude the patient is better. Was it a better range of motion? Was it uh, less muscle spasm when you palpated the patient? Was the patient exhibiting fewer symptoms of pain, uh, like a, a, an altered gait? Um, you know, th this type of writing is not creative writing. This type of writing should be as factual and specific as possible. Your record should include all communications with the client. So that means if the client calls uh, at your home, you need to have a way to create a record of what they what was discussed. Uh, as you keep these records, don't criticize other providers. Uh, for example, if you're an animal chiropractor, it would be a really bad idea to criticize the veterinarian who referred the animal to you. Once the veterinarian sees that record, you can be pretty sure you won't see any more referrals from them. The other reason it's a bad idea is it makes you look unprofessional. Uh, if you're critical of other providers, it, it seems like you're uh, motivated by your ego more than motivated by care for the patient. Uh, so be professional in the way you, you comment about other providers. Don't include frivolous or unnecessary remarks. Um, provide the necessary information and stop. Uh, when you're making your entries as much as possible on paper entries, use the same pen for that entry on the day. Uh, it looks a little unusual if you start a line out with one pen and then you finish it with another pen. It almost looks like you started right on the day of the visit, but you came back sometime later and entered the rest of it with the second pen. Uh, don't make changes to the records. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Even though it may be tempting to make changes to the records or to lose certain pages, that's a very dangerous uh, habit that can backfire uh, in, a, in a bad way. Uh, set up some kind of system in your office to initial reports like x-ray or lab reports before they get put into the patient's file. Uh, you want to be sure or, or indicate that you have read the report. Uh, now, by the way, don't just initial the reports and put them in the file. Uh, you asked for that 
x-ray or that lab work for a particular reason. Uh, go back and look at the results of that report and be sure you, you are following up with it appropriately. If you're going to use computer generated notes, uh, make sure they're personalized. It's real tempting to just use that cut and paste command because you know most chiropractic visits, it's almost the same thing from one visit to the next. But don't do that. Uh, personalize the notes and be sure you look at, uh, as you generate the notes, be sure that you reflect anything unique about that particular visit. Uh, you ought to use abbreviations. Uh, you ought to keep somewhere in your office a legend that lists what abbreviations can be used in your files. Now, there may also be some abbreviations that you decide shouldn't be used. Uh, they may cause confusion, or there are some abbreviations, if your writing is sloppy, uh, it may not be read correctly. Um, so keep a list, and, and part of the reason you keep a list is so that when you produce your records, you can produce that legend with the records so that whoever receives it can interpret and understand your records. The other reason you keep that legend is so that when you bring in new employees to your office, you can train them fairly quickly about what abbreviations they should and should not be using in your records. Uh, in most practices uh, with paper records, it makes sense to keep the financial records in one file and the clinical records in a separate file. Now, I don't view that particularly as a hard and fast rule. Uh, certainly with computerized records, I think it's okay to keep all that information on one computer. Be sure you back up the computer, by the way. Uh, customize the forms that you use. Uh, in today's day and age with word processors and, and, and the abilities of computers, uh, it doesn't make sense to purchase a printed form that doesn't fit your practice. If it doesn't fit your practice, create a form or, or mod, uh, uh, modify a form so that it fits your practice and works the way you want it to work. Uh, keeping records forever probably is not practical, especially with paper records. But as we move more and more towards computerized records, it becomes a real possibility because you can keep all your patient records uh, computerized in a very compact space on a USB drive. Uh, reviewing and archiving files. As files age out, get them out of your way. Uh, whether it's on, you know, if it's a paper file, you, you box them up and ship them to storage. If it's a computer file, you just move the file folder to a different archive space, and that way it doesn't clutter up your day-to-day -day activities. If the client is being non-compliant, they're not keeping appointments, they're not following up the way that they should follow up, they're not administering medications the way they should be administered, that should be documented in the patient's file. Uh, that can be useful sometime in the future if there's a question about why the patient didn't improve. It helps show why the patient didn't improve. Uh, proofreading, we talked earlier about using or not using dictated but not read. Be sure you take some time to proofread correspondence and reports, uh, especially if you are ever involved in a lawsuit. That kind of information can be important uh, in the appearance of, the, of proofread correspondence can make a lot of difference in a jury's perception of your credibility. Uh, some other information that ought to be included in the records uh, include the segments that are adjusted, the technique that was used, uh, when appropriate identify the table and room or the area where the animal was adjusted. Uh, sometimes that can make a big difference uh, about how an animal was treated and about the credibility of the owner as they talk about what you supposedly did. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about the contents of records and the downfall to changing your records. And then that will be the last video for this piece of the part of the class.